Let's get started. So my name is Owen Ryan. I'm the Executive Director of the International Aid Society, and joining me here today is... Megan Warren, Conference Director. Mandy Shigaru, Senior Manager of Communication. And you'll see that we've listed our email addresses under each of our names so that if after this call you didn't get a chance to ask your question, please feel free to send an email to us directly. So this year we've made a number of new and exciting changes to the conference. A lot of these changes have to do with our return to Durban after 16 years, but they're also based on the feedback we get from our delegates each year. So we wanted to get an opportunity prior to registration opening on December 1st to walk through some of these changes with everyone on the call today. We'll also post this webinar, which is being recorded online, and we'll send the slides around so you can feel free to share these with your colleagues and networks. For those of you who aren't familiar with the International AIDS Conference, it's the largest conference on any global health or development issue in the world. First convened during the peak of the AIDS epidemic in 1985, it continues to provide a forum for the intersection of science, advocacy, and human rights. Each conference is an opportunity to strengthen policies and programs that ensure an evidence-based response to the epidemic. The upcoming International AIDS Conference, which we call AIDS 2016 for short, will be held in Durban, South Africa from 18 to 22 July 2016. This year we're expecting over 18,000 delegates, 1,000 journalists, and nearly 1,000 scholarship recipients. You'll see we've got almost 6,800 6, square meters of global village space, and all of the abstracts that are selected for the conference will be published in the Journal of the International AIDS Society. This is not a conference that we do alone, though. Uh, I'm only one of five permanent partners that put on the conference uh, every two years. The IAS is joined by the Global Network of People Living with HIV, the International Community of Women with HIV AIDS, the International Council of AIDS Service Organizations, and UN AIDS. We're also joined with a number of international, regional, and national scientific and civil society partners. These folks put a tremendous amount of time into our conference program. We're grateful for their support. So just some quick context that I know many people who are on the webinar right now will be familiar with. In the year 2000, the conference was a boiling point. Many people see it as a real turning point in the history of HIV. When Nelson Mandela spoke at the International AIDS Conference, no one knew what the future held for the epidemic. The world was angry and anxious over the lack of action on AIDS. And 16 years later, there has been a tremendous change. The global AIDS response has been transformed. However, many of the obstacles that impeded effective HIV prevention and treatment programs in 2000 exist today. So one of the things we're hoping to do with AIDS 2016 is really highlight some of those areas where we still have persistent challenges and things that we need to achieve over the next 16 years. So I'm going to hand the phone now to my colleague, Megan Warren. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to get to tell you a little bit about what's new. Um, we have a number of new updates for 2016. Um, this year we will be doubling the number of scholarships given out to better ensure that the conference is accessible to as many people as possible regardless of factors that may limit ability to attend. We are also further incorporating the traditional pre-conferences into the main conference and I'll talk a little bit more about this on the next slide. Additionally, this year we will be providing a direct and comprehensive transit system for all conference delegates. So as I mentioned on the, the previous slide, we have one conference this year. One of the most exciting things is the integration of these pre-conference with the main conference program. This was a strategic decision uh, to allow delegates access to the strong programming that the pre-conferences offer. Uh, so now, in one venue, delegates will be able to easily access multiple meetings. Secondly, uh, IES is able to help shoulder some of the administrative burden, taking advantage of our logistical and administrative skills to help streamline registration and abstract processes for pre-conference organizers. Uh, the pre-conferences will kick off on the 16th and 17th, and the main, main program will commence on the 18th. Um, so when you look at the conference program, um, it's divided into sort of 
two sections. One is invited speaker sessions, those are designed by the committees, and the other half focuses on abstract driven sessions, which is really around public submissions of cutting edge research. Um, those of you who are familiar with the conference will recognize that there, <clears throat> that the, the tracks shown on the slide are the same tracks that we had for 2014. Um, historically, we receive about 10,000, a little more than 10,000 submissions, and the competition is stiff each year. We are only able to accept approximately 31% of the abstracts and program activity submissions that we receive. Um, this year, as for 2014, we will have two submission forms, one geared towards research um, and one geared towards programming and policy. To give you a little bit more um, detail on the abstracts, uh, of that 31% accept, acceptance rate, 2% of those are oral abstracts, 1.7% are poster discussion sessions, and the rest are, or 25%, are shown in the poster exhibition. Looking at the abstract breakdown regionally, um, the abstract numbers change a bit depending on the location of the conference. So for 2014, we saw an increased number in the submissions from Africa and Asia Pacific, as would be expected. Um, and the U U.S. typically also has a high um, submission rate. Uh, for 2014, the highest number of accepted abstracts came from Africa and the U.S., both at 28%, from Asia Pacific at 23%. For 2014, the um, male-female ratio was almost a perfect split, um, and then we had approximately four 0.4% uh, abstracts submitted by, by, accepted, excuse me, by transgender. Moving on, um, the abstract mentor program. We put this program in place in 2014, um, and it basically, um, we pair uh, junior researchers with mentors in the field that have a proven track record of publications. This year, we have almost 200 mentors in place ready to review abstracts and give feedback on how they could be improved. The program is designed to empower junior researchers, enable them to have a better shot at getting an abstract ac accepted. The program will open mid-November and close in the end of January, giving those who had an abstract mentored approximately two weeks to incorporate the recommended changes and then submit their application. Moving on to the Global Village, which is one of the most exciting um, areas of the conference. Um, it's really a dynamic and diverse space uh, where conference delegates meet the general public. We found, as Owen mentioned previously, that the size of the Global Village in Melbourne was really highly rated. It was a little bit smaller than D.C., but delegates reported a sense of intimacy, so we are still using that as our guideline for Durban. It will open on Monday, um, the 18th at 10 a.m. Um, the Global Village uh, program is made up of activities that are submitted by the public and are chosen um, by the Global Village and Youth Working Group. Uh, that working group will review, score, and select program activities in a blind peer review process. There are many different types of activities in the Global Village. Folks can submit on anything from sessions, which are panel discussions, debates, presentations, to networking zones, which provide space for local and inter international groups to meet. Additionally, we have performances on our main stage of music and dance and theater. There's also a youth pavilion with programming for young people to host meetings and forums. There are art exhibits, a screening room to screen films, and a community dialogue space, which is sponsored by UNAIDS and has an interactive program and includes high-level dialogue sessions. Um, applications for the Global Village open on the 1st of December and close on February 4th. All of the program activities can be submitted online through the, con um, the conference profile. Notifications will be received by mid-April after um, the Global Village and Youth Program Working Group makes the selection. And we hope that the submissions correspond to the sele selection criteria outlined um, in the Global Village and youth program submission guidelines, and those can be found on the website. 
Um, this year, in addition, um, as I mentioned previously, we are, we are doubling the number of scholarships for AIDS 2016. Um, and we're also doing one new thing besides doubling them. Those folks who submitted to the conference program um, where their, their scholarship application was tied to their program submission, they, if their activity or their abstract is not selected for the program, they will be able to be considered again in the general pool of candidates, giving them two chances to receive support. The reason that we do this is because the number of submissions selected for the program are quite small compared with the overall number of submissions. So this mechanism um, really ensures that delegates are not discouraged from submitting applications for the program. And lastly, key dates. Um, so I won't speak individually to this um, slide. I'll just tell you that um, Durban uh, is rounding up to be a very popular conference. Um, so the sooner that you can get your applications in, book your hotel rooms, um, those are going to be very important um, dates to hit uh, because of the, the drive for this conference. Uh, so now I'm going to hand it over to Mandy Chagru, who will take you through the communications pieces. Hi, everyone. Uh, this year, we're changing up our approach to how we do our communications, both on the advocacy partners and the conference delegates. The overall goal is to offer a variety of ways to enhance engagement across the board, both leading up to the conference and at the conference. So for our advocacy partners, we will begin hosting monthly communications calls to help map out upcoming opportunities for collaboration and potential joint activities to promote AIDS 2016. Additionally, we are building a, a, more, uh, a larger emphasis on digital. This includes a website redesign. The, the, I mean, the website's main goal is and will always be to host clear information about the conference, um, such as registration, accommodation, sponsorship, et cetera. Um, but this new refreshed website really aims to create a more streamlined user experience to access that information. And in addition, uh, we're, creating, uh, we're developing a community-style blog that will share new content regularly outside of the traditional conference-specific news. Uh, thirdly, we want AIDS 2016 communications to be part of a larger drumbeat leading up to Durban and not just at the conference itself. The International AIDS Conference is a cumulative a moment made up by a larger sum of activities throughout the year. And this year, those key moments, those events, those conferences, they'll all be part of the larger AIDS 2016 narrative. In that same vein, we will weave in a common thread of continued storytelling throughout our communications. The people, the progress made, the tangible impacts made, and the meaning behind each scientific finding is what makes up what we do and why we do it. Uh, these stories will be a key pillar in our communications and the larger narrative that we're aiming to create. And we will actively look to everyone on this call to help identify and provide, um, provide us with those stories um, <clears throat> to, and use the conference platform to better amplify um, that content. So as I mentioned, we uh, have refreshed our website this year, and it is now live. Uh, again, the goal is to create a real digital hub that offers new content regularly. I urge you all to visit www.aids2016.org often uh, to get both conference news and updates, um, but also read up on new stories, upcoming events, opportunities. Uh, this will all help you connect directly to the conference. We will host and update this as regularly as possible, you will get the latest information, so check back daily. So one of our main goals every year is to make the conference as accessible as possible. And this year, there are a number of ways to get involved. Uh, you can connect directly to the conference by submitting a program suggestion, submitting an abstract, hosting a global village booth, book an exhibition and satellite space, or even just connect with us via social media. Additionally, our civil society partners uh, will be offering their own activities and opportunities to get involved through their community outreach efforts. So there'll be several ways to engage around AIDS 2016. Uh, be sure to visit the website. Uh, we'll be putting as much information there as possible, including upcoming events, uh, opportunities, webinars, digital chats, uh, you name it. So please, please, please visit the website um, for opportunities to connect to the conference. 
And before we wrap up, I just want to drive home a few final reminders for you all. As noted before, the affiliated pre-conference meetings will be held on Saturday and Sunday, the 16th and 17th of July, and the main conference will be held from the 18th to the 22nd of July. In addition, there is a lot of interest from this conference, as Megan noted, and we will really urge you to plan well in advance to make sure that there are no last minute issues. Please make sure to book a hotel as early as possible and additionally review your visa requirements and submit your paperwork as early as possible. Again, all of this information will be on the AIDS 2016 website, so please visit for more details, recommendations, and suggestions. So that brings us uh, to the end of this webinar. Please remember that the registration opens the 1st of December in 2015. It's coming up in a few weeks uh, on World AIDS Day. And visit www.aids2016.org for the latest information.